as the 14 oh, heads no. for the infield. 14 pulled off. Fourth place. Chase Briscoe, what happened? No drive. I've been here, but they can do nothing. It made all kinds of rattling noise when I hit the gas. Uh oh. And I was really starting to get excited. He yes, was, he, he was, was making rolling. great progress. Had driven back by Kyle Larson. Blake jinxed him. Yes. I'm convinced. Something in the drive line. Well, we do know that he was one of the only cars that had been shifting all weekend long here. And now Tyler Reddick is down on the apron. A race leader has come to a halt. What is happening? Regan? Mike, the eight car, Tyler Reddick just pulled down to the inside of the racetrack, believes he broke the transaxle on that race car. That's what makes the car drive forward, basically. Same well, exact thing that the 14 just radio. On these new cars, the transmission has been moved back and is now part of the rear axle assembly, so it's a transaxle. A drive shaft and a torque tube takes power from the engine to the back of the car for more even weight distribution. But that's, this is all new technology to NASCAR for 2022. We run a gear cooler on these cars, and everybody was a little bit concerned on if that cooler was, was big enough, making some adjustments going into the race today from yesterday's practice session. So I'm wondering if that's a temperature-related thing, much like Denny Hamlin's steering issues. Rack and pinion steering, by the way, now on these new cars. And I don't think this is something that you'll see everywhere. This is extreme circumstances where here at the Coliseum with a quarter mile track, you don't have the air speed to go through these coolers and radiators like we normally would at a much larger race track that has much more volume of air and velocity of air to, to cool everything down. So and th these, these scenarios may not happen everywhere. And the 53 laps we just ran were the longest single run of the entire weekend. Exactly. So Kyle Busch's Toyota with Joey Logano's Ford come out of turn four, and they approach the Geico restart zone. And Bush is on it. We're back to green. Kyle Bush is going to try and give the field the goodbye look right here. Joey Logano did a great job. There was a very, very small hole for him to get in down that back stretch ahead of Kyle Larson. He took advantage of it. Now it's Justin Haley in the 31 that's caught on the outside. As Kyle Larson has moved up to third. Now Haley gets down. Daniel Suarez on the outside now gets the 43 of Eric Jones. Haley for third. Takes it away from Larson on the inside. Suarez and Austin Dillon, the 99 and the 3. They're the two cars working the outside, but not gaining any ground. And it's hard, especially with 23 cars on the racetrack. If you get stuck on that outside, it's hard because everybody behind is filling in holes constantly. So if you don't get down early in this, you could, you could easily lose 6-8 spots. Now it's Harvick and Allmendinger for 12th place. They trade a little paint. Cole Custer right behind them as you ride along with leader Kyle Busch on our Toyota cam. Good all the way through, good finish. Christopher Bell to the inside of Suarez. Benny Hamlin and Tyler Reddick talk things over. First two retirees along with Chase Briscoe. Heartbreaker for Tyler Reddick. He really had a car capable of winning this race and he was proving it. Three out of the race. 20 cars contending, 16 of those on the lead lap. Michael McDowell got the free pass on that last, on that first caution to get his lap back. Joey Logano after his heat race today he talk about how they made some really big changes and how much how happy he was and the car responded to it. It's showing here. I mean, he is giving Kyle Busch, he's not giving him the opportunity to relax, nope. to, to run the line that he probably would love to run. Uh, he, he's just gonna, he's he's keeping him busy without touching him, basically. 
Yeah, I see him with the ability to get in. Not only does he get in deeper, he can get off the corner really strong. A lot of forward bite, more dig. Around in turn four goes Chase Elliott. And that's caution flag number two after 65 laps. Coming off turn two, he and Ryan Blaney were battling for seventh place. Blaney in the 12. Gives him a little shot there. No, he got loose. Something, wow. something happened to that car. It jumped out the way it went. Way before, I thought the 12 maybe got into him, but it was well before that. Almost like a wheel hop, it looked like. Pretty significant contact with the wall with the left front there. But ahead of the front wheel, it appeared. It's weird how right there at the beginning of this replay, you see it as soon as he tugs on the wheel, like it just shears it loose all of a sudden. So Chase Elliott continues. Let's get out of the infield and Jamie. And Tyler Reddick was the man to beat. A man on a mission led 51 laps and then an issue from the lead. What happened there? Yeah, I was uh, just trying to get to beat in the tires, Jamie, and I I think I must have broke the transaxle. Um, I don't know. That's a little scary, you know, thinking of all the, the pit stops are going to be due, dropping the clutch like that. So, unfortunate, but I'd rather break it here than in a points-paying race or at the Daytona 500. But, I mean, just an incredible job by our guys. This guaranteed rate Chevrolet was amazing. We really did a lot of the right things going into this race, and uh, we took off a little better than Kyle did, and our car drove good in traffic, so it's, it's a bummer. Um, it's not too heartbreaking at the same time, though, because, I mean, what I did was directly what caused the break, it seems. So we'll learn from it and hope to uh, never let it happen again. We'll uh, turn into a positive and, and learn from it the best we can for the season coming. Thanks, Tyler. Tyler Reddick out of race after leading early here. Ryan Priest gets the free pass on this, the second caution of the race. 65 laps complete. Let's take another look here at Chase Elliott's spin. See Chase coming down the back stretch, and just all at once, it just shears the back of the car loose. And when I see that, Tony, what a difference a day makes in the sport of NASCAR. When we left here yesterday, what car did you, we both think was going to win this yeah, race? Yeah, I was absolutely convinced the nine car was the best car on the racetrack yesterday. And then a car like Joey Logano in the 22 was down and out yesterday, made some big changes, and here he is. All right, here's the choose. Logano goes to the outside instead of the safer route on the inside that Haley and Larson take. Hmm. This will be interesting to see how... Joey fares with that because I think if I were I think if I had the option to take the first three rows on the bottom right now I would do it I don't know that, that from the second option I would have taken that outside front row this early well in just two weeks we move from the historic LA Coliseum to the most iconic day in all of stock car racing it's the Daytona 500 the great American race and it kicks off the 2022 NASCAR season February 20th only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Getting ready for the restart. We're getting word that the nine car says he couldn't get the left front to stop locking up. So I'm wondering if he probably started creeping the brake balance to the back and just got too much and wheel hopped it. Kyle Busch on the inside. Joey Logano on the outside. And we're back to green. So their nose at their pole. 10 laps to the mid-race break. That may have played a role in him choosing that outside. The fact that there's only 10 laps, and there you go, you see him get to the bottom. Here comes William Byron on the outside against Haley for third. And I don't think any of us thought when we came out here that, the, that you would actually have a two wide racetrack let alone we've seen three wide today and just to be able to see guys on these restarts be able to hang on like they